And we're live on Carcon Carne, still in quarantine. This right here is the 225th episode recorded this year. It's episode 525. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, before I begin, before I introduce tonight's guest, I do want to acknowledge a couple of quick things. First off, this week I got this. I ordered this on Bandcamp Day. It is the vinyl reissue of the album Kettleman Don't from Triple Fast Action. Triple Fast, one of the great unheralded Chicago bands of the 90s. This album, one of the great unheralded albums. Uh, this entire double album package is fantastic. Uh, get it, buy it uh, on Bandcamp while it's still there. I think limited copies available. Uh, I've been enjoying listening to this. It's such a pleasure listening to vinyl from Chicago bands, especially. Uh, I also want to acknowledge, I just jumped off to get here. I jumped off the virtual night we stole Christmas live stream that 101 WKQX put together. Uh, I, I want to acknowledge how cool that was, what, what a wonderful experience that was to watch. And I, I want to give props to my friends, friend specifically, Giorgio Reyes, uh, the video videographer, video producer of that. He just made that look so fucking great. It was really cool to watch. One final thing of note, my mail list, my sign up list on carconcarney.com. There are so many reasons to join it, uh, not the least of which being you get to find out what's coming up in Carcon Carney. But people in the email list found out that if they gave me their home address, they got something in return. One of these handsome Carcon Carney membership cards. Look at that. Those <laughs> went out in the mail this week. I, I thought it was kind of a silly idea when I did it, but now I'm really glad I did. So sign up for the, the email list, carconcarney.com. You have a week left to sign up and still be in the running for that $50 gift card to Byron's, which is amazing. So my guest tonight, about a month ago, right before Thanksgiving, I had him on. He is artist George Zach. Welcome back, George. Well, I, I, welcome. Thank you, James. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. I think we're just going to do this before every major holiday. That's the way we're trending at this uh, you point. You know what? I, I'm okay with that. Uh, I get to talk to you. I get to, uh, you know, uh, put my art out there. And, uh, you know, good time. Do, do they still acknowledge Casimir Pulaski Day? Can we do something for Pulaski Day? That's my favorite day. My last name is actually Zakshesky. So, uh, Kashmir Pulaski Day is, is a very holy, sacred day. So, do you have one of those Polish surnames that has very little vowels, very few vowels? Yeah. Oh, oh it's, uh, my last name is spelled like if you mash the keyboard. Uh huh. Just all consonants. Yeah. Z R Z K Z R W. So for all intents and purposes, you are George Zach. I'm good yeah, with that. Yeah, Let's. Let... Uh, it was always an easier thing. And uh, my father, they always called him Zach. So um, that was kind of like a little hand-me-down because it was just easier to, you know, say, pronounce. Then people are like, hey, Georgie Alphabet, get over here. You know? So when we talked last time, I, I'm going to have you kind of re-explain who you are and what your journey has been. Uh, you spent years toiling in the restaurant industry the bottom fell out of the restaurant restaurant industry because of the pandemic this year and you use that as an opportunity to follow your passion for painting and creating artwork that in turn has led to a fair amount of success your, your stuff's flying off the walls uh, at, at your at your shop at your your, your workshop there uh, you're keeping super busy it, it's like this is the career that has been waiting for the opportunity to present itself for you it, it really kind of came together serendipitously because of the pandemic uh absolutely um you know i wouldn't be in this spot if if uh if the pandemic didn't hit you know um you know years of years in the restaurant business and you know being a chef or or gm of bars and restaurants um you don't have a lot of time, you know, it's, it's hours and hours and hours and hours a day. And then you get done late and it's, you know, off to the owl for drinks or whatever. And, you know, the, the hard part is, is, is that's where, that's where a bunch of uh, art gets curbed. You know, I wasn't even barely finishing two, three paintings uh, or works of art um, a year, you know, over the past 15 years or, or whatever. And, the fact that when COVID hit and, you know, you just kind of got so much time, there's only so much TV you can watch. There's only so many video games you can play. There's only so many, you know, not going to places that you can do. And for me, it was very like, all right, well, you know, I, I, you know, picked up a paintbrush again and started painting. And the more I do it, the more I want to do it. 
and it's it's uh, cathartic and it's really the I'm I wasted so much of my life not and I won't say wasted that's a that's a bad way to say it but mm-hmm. I, I've spent so much of my life like you know uh, in a bar or you know not not being productive with my with my time and I can't think of a better way than creating art and stuff that people like you know to to, to move on it, it, you know i'm kind of kicking myself that i didn't do this you know 25 30 years ago but you can't I, that's 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 not a healthy way to look at things i mean you're here you're doing it now and you're loving it period full stop you, well you, and that's a good right, point. right situation right it would time. be the same art it wouldn't yeah. be the same art yeah no i i think you should revel in the fact that you've you found this time and the muse spoke to you now and you're moving forward with it. I think, well, I think it's, it's, right. it's fun and it's great. And uh, I literally have to purge it now. Um, you know, I'm in the shower or uh, wake up in the middle of the night and I have to sketch ideas and, you know, um, you know, James, I, I got, I got a hundred more paintings that are in my head that are all on deck right now. See, you and know? the challenge of this type of creativity is nothing can be done quickly. I mean, there's a bottleneck. It's like the Hillside Strangler. They all just kind of pile up there waiting for their access point to merge on in. You, you can't, there, there's no fast process to this. No, it's, and it's not. And it's, uh, it's a weird thing too, because, you know, um, I'll do a piece of art and like it and, you know, kind of wait a week before I even look at it again for framing purposes or whatever, because, I'm not working on one, I, you know, I'm working on seven different paintings right now or, you know, pieces of art or however you want to categorize it. Um, it's, uh, I'm not a person that can start it and paint it and yeah. embellish it and frame it and follow it all the way through. I mean, I, it's too frantic, you know. Your website, before we show some paintings, your website is? Oddkidart.com. That's uh, O-D-D. K-I-D-A-R-T dot com and uh, it's up and running and I have a lot of uh, I have a lot of stuff on there and in the next uh, day or two because I've been doing commissions so much but now that Christmas is here I can actually get like you know 40 more uh, 40 more pieces up so you're busy you're definitely busy all right let's let's show some of this stuff and one of the things you talked about framing uh one of the things i really enjoy about your presentation is yes the actual painting is the focus of the piece but you put thought into the framing the the framing is part of the overall aesthetic of your yeah, work absolutely. absolutely well it's it's you know like i mentioned on the show last time it's uh framing is expensive and you know, when you give the gift of art or whatever, or you buy it for yourself, it's it's probably not what the artist had envisioned for it. And that's why I kind of do right. funky, weird, you know, stuff that's not, you know, hundreds and hundreds of dollars of fine mahogany, you know. <laughs> all right, let's talk about some of these pictures. And I realize we're recording this live to video on Facebook. That's the way I record all these shows now. I realize that for people listening after the fact uh, in true podcast form, might struggle because they can't see what we're showing to that i say we're going to do our best job to describe what you're seeing but also go to oddkidart.com to see these things uh in their all their glory all right so let's begin george zach artist george zach starting with this whole thing one pill makes you larger one pill makes you small and the ones that mother gives you don't do anything at all uh this is uh, just a trippy mushroom alice in wonderland psychedelic freak out thing you have going on here it it is and uh so i started a i made a painting one night and i was messing around with glow in the dark paints and whatever and i really couldn't stand it and then once i embellished it what happened was um and you might get to it later it's uh it's very saved by the bell or a swatch or whatever and i kind of was like you know what um you know what do writers do what do you know uh cinematographers do they do the things that they know they do the things that they grew up with it so i wanted to start a whole nostalgia series you know i grew i grew up in the 80s and 90s and you know nostalgia's on the mind a lot now you know uh, stranger things or whatever you know uh people buying each other bubble tape you know 
And uh, what happened was, is I started doing all these things and that's kind of the series we're gonna run through tonight. Um, you know, that's the Grateful Dead parking lot at Soldier Field to me <laughs> for, uh, for all honesty. <laughs> um, you know, I, uh, I was listening, I put on some old uh, Dead albums and, uh, you know, was in the studio and before I knew it, I was like, okay, I just painted a trippy mushroom. And, uh, you know, uh, when I paint, I kind of, it just kind of turns off. It's almost like time traveling. I, you know, I, I just kind of do whatever comes out and it's just, you know, I look up later and I'm like, wow, holy shit, you know, this is something. And, uh, um, a partner of mine, Raphael, uh, helped me with the framing and we kind of just put it all together and it's, you know, uh, paper mache type situation, mushrooms on top of those, you know, psychedelic mushroom. And it was basically, that was, uh, that was soldier field parking lot minus the nitrous balloons. Yeah. I mean, this is all about mushrooms and it's super colorful. It, it is very, it's trippy. It's psychedelic. I, I think there's a certain type of collector or person who would want oh, this on his or her wall for certain people you know yeah i mean if i put this on my wall my kids would walk in and be like yeah. damn what, what kind of fucked up midlife crisis are you going gonna through tell their teachers and you're going to be investigated by dcfs I, exactly yesterday you were drinking a fresca and you know now you got this on the wall what's happening but you mentioned listening to grateful dead albums what you know traditionally the grateful dead fans hated the the studio albums the yeah, passive, fan, um, passive fans didn't give a shit they were fine with them uh, what's your favorite Grateful Dead album? Um, you know, maybe Space or, you know, it was one of those things where, uh, you know, the Grateful Dead at 17 at Soldier Field parking lot was a place to get psychedelics, you know, and, uh, you know, the concerts and the whatever. I mean, they toured for 40 years. Mm -hmm. um, you know, they, they have, you know, 300 Japanese bootlegs and, uh, you know, it was just kind of one of those things where it's a, it was a time and place, you know, for, sure. for uh, uh, for me and a lot of my friends and a lot, and you know, a lot of people in Chicago, you know, I, I put on my, I put on my Birkenstocks and my tie dye and my patchouli and uh, went about my day. <laughs> All right. Let's look at this one. This is, this feels very 1980s to me. It's, it's, well, I, I guess to describe, describe it. Cause you'll probably describe it better than I can. Well, that's, that's the one that started it. And I started messing around with, uh, you know, different different brands and different, you know, densities of uh, a glow in the dark paint. Because I did a few where like, you know, it's one painting and you flip off the light and it's another, but it's not, it, they weren't like super strong or anything. So I started messing around with these paints and I just kind of was like splashing around. And before I fixed it, I was like, I want to smash it. You know, uh, it didn't, uh, it was just, it was kind of awful and it was like well you know me and uh you know one of the guys here were talking and it was like wow it's kind of very 80s so basically it looks like a swatch background with yes you know, geometric shapes and i called this one swatched by the bell so those were kind of the, like the squiggles and the and the and the shapes and the you know, it's a, it's basically the front of a trapper keeper you know that's exactly okay that perfect you said that beautifully all right, let's go here. <laughs> it's so it's a skull and crossbones, but I don't know what the skull is that I'm looking at. Well, that's uh, the Powell Peralta symbol. Um, you know, Tony Hawk and Stacy Peralta and uh, um, all the old skate stuff from skateboarders. And it's the it's the cat and crossbones. And, uh, you know, that was a uh, that was. I remember drawing that everywhere I could in my notebooks and stuff. And, and, and uh, you know, it's like the cat face. And, and then what I did was to frame it, I put a grind rail on the top because I, I was a big skater. So like all the old uh, skate art has, you know, I, I mean, these, these boards that they came out with, whether it was Tony Hawk or Lance Mount or what, whatever were, were l legit works of art. And uh, you know, there's a reason that these, these old boards are going for $1,500 or $3,000 mm -hmm. or whatever. And I wanted to just pay homage to it. So I did the old Bones Brigade symbol. And then I put a grind rail on the top and uh, kind of a little version of a skate deck on the bottom with, you know, my, my little odd kid symbol on there. And it, it kind of came out. It's like, uh, you know, like almost like uh, 
Dogtown Classy or something, you know. <laughs> and I, I used to think that Grind Rail was the name of a strip club. It's not. <laughs> that uh, that was that was as well. Yeah, me, me and my buds were going to the Grind Rail. Yeah, after the yeah. show. The Grind Rail. That's exactly. But it, like, I, I mean, James, uh, you know, this really was my nostalgia. And yeah, different people it. have nostalgia, you know, and and what they remember. And I remember like you know waking up in in the summer and it being you know 9 30 and i was literally brushed my teeth out the door at 9 33 to go skate or die with all my little friends all day long you know tear up and you know cops are hassling us man or uh -huh. you know whatever and just kind of you know i mean those were those were uh those were the days you know those definitely were the days well speaking of nostalgia Huh. of all there there's so many tragedies bad things terrible shitty moments in 2020 uh losing eddie van halen of course terrible cataclysmic event in rock and roll this what we're looking at here is an eddie van halen guitar i mean you, it's unmistakable and it? it's absolutely and um actually um that is a Work of art from uh, one of our uh, artists here, uh, Raphael. Do you want to come talk about your art here, boy? That Eddie. Yeah. So he made it, so I can't really speak to it. So. Gotcha. Hi, Raphael. I'm James. Hi, how are you, James? Well, I, we made this because you know. I mean, think about it. Eddie Van Halen was everything back in the day. Van Halen was huge, and when he died, it, it took a part of took a piece of all of us. Right. So, I wanted to make sure it was just. Uh, moralized a little bit so yeah. what are we looking at here it's hard to tell from the image the actual work is shaped like a guitar i mean it's not a framed that's all wood yeah i cut it all out carved it hand carved it did the neck everything but even the strings are actual just wire this is all yeah, this is all stuff we have in the, in the studio here it looks so real and as it, well it just kind of you know the hands do what they do and mine just took over and Time travel is what it feels like. And before you know it, you have this huge piece. You're like, oh my god, where's the where? You know, where can I plug in my uh, my cord? It's the only thing I have, really. But. Yeah, it's uh, it's as uh, it's as realistic as it gets. And it's you know, as a as paying homage to to Eddie and to Art. Um, you know, looking at the picture now that that you have up, James, it's uh, it's pretty funny because like you look at it in person and. You know, it's all it's it's folk art. You know, it's yeah. basically nowadays folk art, and I don't know how we did it and whatever, but it's. Yeah, I don't uh, know either. Just kind of happened. Well, nice job. So if I pick it up, can I play? So this is love, Mean Street, Unchained. A little out of tune, maybe. Yeah, A little out of tune. <laughs> I love it. Nice job, Raphael. Thank you for uh, sliding on over. Yeah. All right, let's go down our list here. We have, and I love this. And I, I don't know if I can uh. rotate this. There, there we go. You want to talk nostalgia? Here we go. It is quintessential sound system from the past. Uh, we're looking at a giant state-of-the-art boombox scenario, right? Well, you don't it's want a stereo that, system. That's not. That's not. It's a. It's a boombox. Actually, it has a handle that it's hanging on, but mm -hmm. you can't really see it great from the from the. Oh yeah. Okay. Gotcha. Um, it is not just a giant boom box it is the boom box that is radio rahim's boom box that i painted from do the right thing nice and, um looked it up and you know it's it's obviously not you know exact um i took uh you know poetic license if you will um you know there's uh when you look close and stuff there's radio rahim and spike lee and all kinds of stuff in there and uh um it took forever because I'm not the kind of artist that's, uh, you know, I'm not a geometric, you know, there's a lot of art that's very um, architectural, you know, um, so the straight lines and the, you know, the straight circles and everything were, were, were a pretty good challenge for me, but uh, like I, it came out amazing. It came out amazing and it hangs on the wall. So it's just a boom box in the that's handle awesome. and it's, you that's know, awesome. straight from the movie. Radio Raheem Karen and and Bill Nunn actually died. Uh, uh, maybe it was this year or last year. So I put a bunch of like his birthday and his death date and little uh, little uh, tributes to him 
you know, inside the numbers and letters and stuff. So that, that was super that cool. Came out great. Uh, I'm, I'm happy with it. It's actually three canvases put together. That is super cool. And this goes back to what we were saying about how the frame and how it hangs on the wall is part of the piece. It's, it, it really is a deliberate part of the, of the, of the piece. I, I almost can't understand why people would take like a funky, cool painting or something and then, you know, put a, a, a high gloss mahogany antique looking yep. frame on it. And it's, you know, it, it's almost, uh, you know, I don't know a lot of uh, artists that are doing their own frames or whatever, but it, 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 it almost should be a industry standard, you know, and I, not to, I'm not trying to insult anybody or anything, but you know, in my mind, at least, you know, I mean, I'm not the greatest woodworker in the world, but, you know, I can, I can make my idea on how it should look for, you know, a specific uh, painting that I made, you know. The woodworker is another great strip club name, but looking at this oh. picture right here, uh, so it's, it's a firework, it, it's blowing out the frame, there's a, there's a white kind of beveled edge frame that's being blown out uh, on the top and the left. But it says M2020, that's Mad Dog 2020, yes? No, well, it, it is and it isn't, okay? So once again, these are nostalgia pieces for, you know, for my life. And mm -hmm. uh, at least one point in my life, Mad Dog 2020 was part of it. it but cheap. it's also, you know, it's an M80. Um, you know, it's a very cartoon version of an M80. But, you know, what, what the fuck is blowing up this year? It's 2020. So, you know, I uh -huh. gave it. I did a M2020 and, uh, you know, um, I was getting ready to, you know, once again, like, how would this look? And I'm thinking about like a nice little antique frame kind of thing. And I'm like, fuck it. It's a firework, man. It, you know what I mean? It's, it should look like it's, you know, blew off the frame. And, uh, it, once again, it came, kind of came out better than I would have thought. And, uh, I kind of love it. If it, if it doesn't sell, I'll be, I'm going to be happy to put that one on my wall. Yeah. I mean, the blown out frame is, so eye-catching so striking because it, it reminds me and i don't know if i'm going to completely lose you on this george so fingers <laughs> crossed back in the day will eisner legendary wildly influential graphic artist uh, created a comic called the spirit who mm -hmm. is a superhero and yeah on the splash page for the opening of all these spirit comics the word spirit was part of the background part of the scene on that yeah, page. Very Frank Miller ish. Uh, yeah, Frank took a ton of inspiration from uh, Will Eisner, but the spirit was just part of the piece. And that's, the, I, this feels very, very Will Eisner ish to me, just how everything works together. Well, and what did we, do, what did we do, James? Um, I mean, I don't know how, uh, how your childhood and your nostalgia was, but uh, well, we got our hands on M80s. So we blew up shit, you know? And, uh, <laughs> You know, I, apparently uh, all the enemies reminded me of that. And I was, you know, when all this series started and I looked down at the swatch type painting, um, you know, I was kind of like, I could picture it on my wrist. So then I thought about what did my day look like? What did my, you know, best summer days look like? You know, it was, it was public enemy. It was skateboarding. It was blowing up shit. It was looking down at my swatch, you know, it was grinding on a rail, you know, um, and that's kind of, uh, that's kind of just where, I, I mean, what did we do? And it's still like, a, it's still like a great looking frame. It's chrome and shiny and, you know, but well, uh, I, you know, had to, had to, I had to blow it up. So. All right, let's move on. Let's go to this. Oops. Sorry. Uh, this is fun. This is a very pop art looking piece. Like a, there's a super soaker on it. There's uh is, is this all water guns it, it, it is and uh you know to to touch on that again i was talking about you know my my best summer days and um i kind of we were talking and you know we'd had a couple drinks and uh we were talking and i, I knew i wanted to do like either a, a nerf gun piece or a water gun piece but you know uh, sticking with the summer theme i kind of wanted to do a water gun piece so i went back and looked at all the like water guns that I tried to remember that I had. And basically this was my arsenal. And, and the picture in my head was, you know, somebody, somebody, you know, the bully kids in the neighborhood threw a bucket of water on me or whatever. And, uh, you know, I went in my room and flipped over the, the race car bed and, you know, uh, 
of my arsenal was under there and I had my super soaker and my, you know, my water guns and my grenade water balloons. And, you know, it's basically like, uh, you know, a dream kids arsenal of water guns from the, from the eighties and nineties. And, uh, it's weird too, because like, so the super soaker and, and that's, and you know, the, the little small water guns on the top, uh, the green one was actually, um, it was a company called Entertech and they were the ones that got in trouble when they, they made the, the water guns, they were electric water guns and they made them too realistic. That's why all the, all the, all the toy guns in the world now have uh, orange tips on it because their guns were so, I mean, they made like, you know, like a big giant AK 47 and yeah. stuff like that. So it was, uh, you know, it was nostalgia to put that on there. And the, the red little Uzi one was the, the commercial, uh, it was called Zap It. And uh, that was the disappearing ink stuff. So the commercial was like, man, 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 man. And the guy, oh, you sprayed ink on me. But then it was like, oh, look again, it went away. So, you know, those were the, those were the ones I had that I loved. And those were my arsenal. And who could love more than, the, you know, hand grenade water balloons? Oh, absolutely. Now, keep in mind, I haven't seen any of these. My first time seeing all these is everyone else's first time, too. So it's taking me a second to take this all in. Love the water balloons hanging from the bottom. Yeah, on the pegboard. It looks like uh -huh. an arsenal. Like Mr. and Mrs. Smith were yes. 11. Yes. Well, they, they were 11 and they were in a water balloon fight. So they opened up their little spy arsenal and uh, this is what it looked like, you know. I even put the hose nozzle on there, you know. Yes, exactly, because that counts. That's fair. Yeah. All right, now this. This is, this is a... a I guess a, a rocket ship from well, Galax it's, Galaxian. Galaga. it's Galaga. And this is another one that uh, Raphael had made. Um, he's actually uh, got his hands full at the moment with paint. And uh, so basically uh, we took a little cabinet and uh, he made a, a resin pour. So the, the, the back of it um, um, under the spaceship is, uh, you know, it's a resin pour. It's got colors in it. It's very space and nebula. And then in the cabinet, he, he put a bunch of lights and it was very, um, you know, it was very cabinet of, uh, you know, Galaga and stand up arcades and oh, yeah. that kind of thing. So it's the, uh, you know, the very recognizable pixel version of the Galaga ship. Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was Galaxian or Galaga. They kind yeah, of they're all together. the space invaders are all kind of, you know. Oh, no, no. Together in that. In the Galaxian was next level. Yeah. Uh, there was color. In Galaxy, yeah, yeah, exactly. Space and then, Invaders did and not have started the whole Metroid and you know led into all the space games. God, when I first discovered Galloping Ghost in God, what suburb is that? Is that Brookfield? Um, where they have all those 80s and 70s stand up games, and I'm like, yeah. oh, I haven't played Quicks in 30 years, and yeah. I'll see yeah, you in an hour. Well, like, and then places did it like um, Logan Hardware, and yeah. You know, uh, and it was great. It, it, it's great to like look at that stuff. I mean, you know, what's better than you know drinking a triple Carmelite and playing Frogger? You know, I, I, all those old games. I, I'm telling you, when I went to Galloping Ghost, games I hadn't thought of since I was 12 years old. I forgot about the Superman stand-up game and uh, it, Dig Dug. I guess is is a big one, but all these obscure. Uh, gosh, I can't even remember. I mean, Warriors. <laughs> just insane insane stuff so yeah fond memories of that fond memories of hanging out at the bowling alley yeah, yeah exactly back, bowling, back in the day I, you could tell your parents i'm going to spend the day at the bowling alley yeah, yeah exactly. if i let my kid go to the bowling alley yeah, they have to have uh, cameras on them at all time you know right i mean that in the modern day that'd be like telling your parents i'm going to go run off with the carnies yeah and well the car could carnies right yeah hey <laughs> Uh, Nash, well done. Yeah, uh, so, you know it's a different time. You know, I mean, the only thing uh, we were told were was don't, don't run with scissors and you know don't uh, don't get in any white vans. You know, exactly. And other than that, be home when the streetlights are on. And that's right. the, you know maybe that's the name of the series when the streetlights are on. You know, and that's the whole uh, the, you know homage to my uh, childhood. Yeah, and you, you'd come home and get asked, "Well, what'd you do today?" Oh, we just ran around meanwhile my friends and i are jumping on the l going as far south as we can <laughs> like walking through downtown walking through lincoln park at the age of 14 15 like, yeah. i don't know if this makes it me helicoptery or not but i 
I, I can't even fathom. Letting yeah, absolutely. It was, uh, yeah, it was, you know, it really was a different time and, uh, you know, reckless time. I mean, we used to jump off of roofs in the pools and, uh, you know, uh, uh, stole a bottle of schnapps from my mom, you know, let's go drink it in the park or, you know, I, I we're just kind of asking for trouble back in those days, but oh God. You know, there, were mean, also, there were also really great days, you know? Oh, no doubt about it. But I, I remember you know, breaking into friends, parents, liquor cabinets, and we'd skim like an eighth of a 750 milliliter <laughs> of the bottle and we'd water it down to make it look like the level hadn't moved. Surely those parents at some point poured themselves a drink and thought, yeah, I'm not feeling anything. I'm not tasting anything. I'm going to no. kill that kid. No, they didn't touch it until you stole it back and remembered that you had watered down vodka. You know? Yeah, exactly. You this stole sucks. it later when yeah. you needed it all, you know? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, so again, oddkidart, oddkidart.com is where we find your stuff, and we can order. Oh, look. There we go, a little cue card. We can order commissions on oddkidart. We can Absolutely. see all your stuff. And uh, I, I love, I mean, I... I I'll say this till I'm blue in the face. I love this notion of innovating in this most horrible of times uh, and finding a path for yourself as the, the dumpster fire is never ending. I, I think it's really cool what you've been able to do for yourself. Well, th thank you, James. Um, I, I'm really liking it. You know, I, I still have my catering company, uh, you know, uh, Chicago catering and uh, you know, I'm still doing that stuff. Um, you know, in the meantime, I, I have to, it's my release. I have to purge. I have to create, um, you know, it's, you can't go from, you know, it's like, uh, you know, the old cop that retires after 30 years and starts, you know, monitoring the neighborhood kids or something. You just kind of, you just kind of know what you know. And, and I like to create and uh, which brings me to another point. Um, I wanted to make you something. You don't have to do. I, bet, um, I, bet I, this. I, I enjoy it. <laughs> that, that one was fun. But once again, it's it's my pleasure to do it because, you know, I need to get it out and, you know, to sit around and make cool shit all day is a dream come true. So what's like, uh, what did your perfect summer day entail when you were a little uh, misguided youth? <laughs> I was misguided. By the way, before we get there, I, I want to point out the fact I have plants in the background. Okay. They're, they're new to the Carcon Carne set. What do you think? Cool. That is no, I, I think they look good. I think there's a, maybe a certain type of plant that you might be missing, but that's for a different show. Something with more color? Uh, yeah, yeah, more glistening maybe. <laughs> more glistening. I don't know what that means. Uh, I, so nostalgia for me is a misspent youth. I mean, I'll tell you, I, without not even thinking about this from a, from a painting perspective, just being truthful, my entire junior high, high school experience, those weekends were spent at record stores. I mean, I, my entire youth was spent going to Record City in Skokie and buying records, pr, you know, going through every bin, buying posters, buying seven inches, looking for weird imports and stuff in the in the cutout bin, uh, going to in stores of bands I never heard of before. I, th that was my yeah, cultural great. upbringing. I, yes, I would hang out at the bowling alley with the drifters and ne'er-do-wells, but uh, for me, I mean, childhood was entirely based on going to the record store and finding money to buy records, working jobs in high school so I could buy more records. It was all about the acquisition of music. Uh, no surprise, I, I, I've led the career that I've had. Um, uh, what's brings you to the business? Huh? Yeah, I, I, I went into radio because I love music. Uh, so that, that's, that's nostalgia. It's nostalgia, it's also the present day for me. Um, as I said, you know, when I started the show tonight, oh my God, I love the fact that I can hold this new triple fast action uh, vinyl release. Oh yeah, absolutely. I, uh, I saw that. Um, yeah. Uh, music, you know, like you said, um, it was the same thing for me. You know, I, I didn't get to that point yet, uh, as far as a, a piece of art for it. Um, but you know, release day at Rolling Stone, you know, uh, the hip was my mall, you know, um, I grew up in Melrose and Stone Park and, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that was our closest, uh, kind of place. And, uh, you know, release day at Rolling Stone was something special. You know, it. Uh, I, I still go to Rolling Stone. Absolutely. I, I mean, it's you know, I, I live in Jefferson Park here, so I mean, that's my that's my mall. So, yeah, there, there's there's a whole circuit to do. In fact, I was in that neighborhood today. I had to run out and do an errand, and I went to Riviera 
on Harlem to get, get the Diavolo sub, which oh, yeah. is like three or four kinds of meat, and it's all super spicy with this homemade, super fiery jardinera, uh, just greasy, and I, my nose was running, the back of my head was sweating. It, it was so oily and spicy, I was hiccuping about halfway through. Perfection. And yeah. it's you know only about a, a mile away from Rolling Stones yeah. over by the well, hill. And, and I go there a lot, but my sub growing up, um, you know, was uh, Alan Joe's, if you ever had it. It's in no. Schiller Park. It's right off of Mannheim over there. It's a, like, you know, the old Italian guys had the place for 50 years, you know. They make the subs in the morning, and they just kind of marinate all day, and when they're sold out, they're sold out. And, you know, like you said, the spicy jardinera and the kind of, you know, um, yeah, you know, the summer day, oh, let's, let's ride four miles on our bike to go get subs, you know, that's... Uh -huh. It's crazy to think of nowadays, like how that happened, you know? Absolutely. All right. So in summary, oddkidart.com. I love the new pieces we got to look at tonight. As I'm Thank looking at over your right shoulder, that, that water gun piece, I, if someone doesn't buy that tonight, I don't understand anything anymore. Cause that that's it's great because it's so it's, it's visually stunning. And uh, you know how I antiqued the frame of your piece, you know, and made it look almost like uh, you know, uh, what's the truck from the movie Cars? Mater, right? He's it's a little uh, it's a little beat up because it wasn't uh -huh. checked engine light after all. Uh, the one with the water guns, you know, I left it uh, nice and shiny. You know, like like Mister and Smiths, Mister uh, Mister and Mrs. Smiths, you know, or CIA or Col Columbiana opens their arsenal, and you know that's kind of what came out. And that's uh, you know I I, I wonder to myself. Why the hell doesn't Super Soaker or the powers that be redo these commercials? You know, you, you, they that was the hottest thing. I remember asking for squirt guns in December for Christmas and not being able to use them until summer because that was the hottest new Christmas, you know, yeah. kind of, of thing. And, uh, you know, get, uh, get Danny Trejo to, to come <laughs> out and sell some water guns, you know. Uh, one other thing I want to mention before I cut you loose, we looked at the boombox piece, just the, the JPEG of it earlier. Now that I see it over your head, I, I, I had no real sense of the enormousness of that piece. It's that is big. gigantic. It's big. You know what? It's perfect for, it will go perfect as a living room, you know, as a living room piece in like a loft or, or for somebody that's into hip hop and music. And, you know, I, I mean, it was, it was do the right thing. It was public enemy. It was radio Raheem. It was, you know, fat lace Adidas and King Gold hats and, and big thick glasses, you know, before hipsters, you know, uh, the rappers had the big thick glasses. So, um, you know, I, I always envisioned it on, uh, you know, kind of a, um, exposed brick wall or something in somebody's loft yeah. or, or whatever. Cause, cause it is, it, it's an over the, it's an over the couch, you know, kind of, uh, kind of piece where, it's also a conversation piece, you know, like, oh, mm -hmm. that's awesome. And, and that's really the essence of what I've been trying to do is I'm trying to make cool enough stuff where people say, wow, what the fuck is that? Yeah, absolutely. Well, you're doing it. I, I love it. Okay, All right. So, so we'll see you for Pulaski Day or Valentine's Day. Yeah, or St. absolutely. Patrick's or yeah, yeah, or yeah, whatever's uh, April Fool's well, or whatever. Well, is, it, is it Box Day three days from now? Or are we, you know, we're not doing that, are we? I, uh, I, I won't taking... have enough work done. I'm, I'm taking the rest of the holiday weekend off. Carcoon Carney will return on Monday. And happy uh, holidays to you. Thank you to you as well. And thank you everybody for watching and listening. Uh, truly much appreciated. Uh, I'm going to say goodbye to the Facebook live feed right now, but thank you everybody for checking everything out tonight.